Let's bring in Katie McFarland with us now. Uh, Congressman Mike Walsh, you may just have heard this, uh, Katie. Congressman Mike Walsh accuses the administration of burying Iran's threats against Donald Trump. You think there's any truth in that? Yeah, I think there's a lot of truth in that. You know, the, the administration, the Biden-Harris administration has always been anti-Israel, pro-Iran from the very beginning, just like the Obama administration was. And so any criticisms of Iran somehow are made, potentially, but then they seem to disappear. What worries me a lot more is Kamala Harris's foreign policy advisor. He's someone who had been embroiled in the Iran influence peddling um, operation. You know, there were a number of U.S. government officials in the in the Biden administration who've now been uncovered to have been cooperating with the Iranian government in writing anti-Israel, pro-Iran um, editorials trying to sway American public opinion. And the vice president's foreign policy advisor is one of those people. So I think it all bears a lot more scrutiny. What is their connection? Why yeah. are they always so soft on Iran? And particularly, why do they hate Israel so much? Yeah, good question. Iran is reportedly on the verge of launching another direct attack on Israel. Katie, is war, is war inevitable? No, I don't think it's inevitable, but I think that the Biden-Harris policies, I guess because she's in charge now, they, they make it much more likely because, first of all, they enriched and enabled Iran, especially Iran, by dropping the sanctions, by lowering the oil, by raising the oil prices, Iran got rich. And then they, they really soft-pedaled every criticism of Iran, so they emboldened Iran. And as a result, you know, Iran, Israel is now facing war on three or four fronts. It's not only the West Bank, but it's Hamas on the, east, on the western side of Israel, and it's Hezbollah from the north, and really the Houthis from the Red Sea Gulf area. So Iran's behind all this. Iran's the money man behind all this. And I think Iran looks at the American election you know, election season is open season and trying to influence the American Jeez. election. Uh, we have a development on Venezuela. Uh, the Wall Street Journal reports that the U.S. is mm -hmm. secretly offering amnesty to Venezuela's Maduro if he gives up power. What do you make of that? You know, on the surface, it really makes you mad. Yes. Because here's Maduro, who's corrupt. He's so corrupt. He's so incompetent. He's responsible for the complete, really, failure of his country. And so you want to punish him. You want to make sure that he pays the price. But a guy like Maduro, he is a dictator. What we've seen in the history of dictators going back hundreds and thousands of years, they never want to leave power because they're afraid of what happens to them after they leave power. Are they going to be assassinated? Are they going to be held accountable? And so whether it's you know the Balkans War, whether it's World War I with Germany, whether it's World War II, they don't want to leave power even though they're facing certain defeat on the battlefield or on the economic front. So it makes a little bit of practical sense. If, if Venezuela can get rid of Maduro peacefully without having to resort to violence and just get him out of there and he can go live, I don't know, wherever he goes and lives, and, but as long as he goes, then, then that country has a possibility and a prospect of peace and prosperity, which is what happened before Maduro came in. Now let's turn to Ukraine and Russia. Ukraine says they have taken 28 towns inside Russia, and Russia has evacuated, mm -hmm. we're told, uh, more than 180,000 civilians. I is this a real turning point, KT? I mean, it may be just leverage for a ceasefire. What do you think? Right. I think, I think that's, that's a very good point, the leverage for the ceasefire. Look, Ukraine is a small, it's a war of attrition. Ukraine is a smaller country with limited people and limited resources. Russia's at unlimited resources and unlimited population to fight this war and unlimited um, patience to fight this war. So Ukraine has shaken this up, and that's a very good thing. But at the end of the day, it's going to be negotiations that settle this. And maybe this now Ukraine is in a far better position for negotiations. What worries me again is that the Biden-Harris administration, they don't want negotiations. They've always told Iran, Ukraine, keep fighting, keep fighting. We've got to punish Russia. You've got to win. Well, winning is very unlikely and probably impossible because of the reasons I've just said. It's a war of attrition. But... If this is a good move, if then they move to no negotiations. Foreign policy is not the Biden-Harris strong suit, and that is a fact. Katie McFarlane, thanks for being with us. Appreciate it. Always.